we're taking a high level look at the directory structure of a basic Jekyll site. And don't stress too much if you don't pick up these concepts right now, because we'll be going in depth on these topics in later tutorials. So for a start, we've got underscore config.yaml. This holds the configuration for your site, and it's usually used to set variables uh, which are used over your site. So here we have a URL, um, which can be referenced all over our site. We can set up collections or front matter defaults, and we can use it to specify runtime variables we want every time we run the site. For example, if I always wanted to show the draft posts on the site, um, I could just go show drafts is true. Next up we have underscore drafts, and this holds all our draft blog posts, um, which is useful because it allows us to work on a, on a blog post without having it published to the live site. Uh, next we have includes. Uh, so includes are partial parts of a page, which can be included throughout our site. Includes are often used for page sections which are duplicated across the site. So here we have a newsletter section, which is on my index page and my blog page. So I can specify it once in this file and use it in multiple locations. Now we have layouts, which are templates that wrap around our content. Typically, all your repeating code, like your header, footer, navigation, uh, will live in a layout. So here we have all the header code and navigation code, which doesn't really change, uh, the footer code, and we have a placeholder for where the content's gonna go. Posts contain our blog posts, which are usually written in Markdown. Uh, so this is our Markdown content here. Underscore data contains YAML, JSON, or CSV files. Uh, and the data in these files can be used throughout our website. So here we're specifying um, the authors of our blog posts, and we can reference this data from a blog post to print out the author information. So underscore site is used by Jekyll after it's finished a build, and it will just place the entire static website here. Dot Jekyll metadata. This is a file that's used by Jekyll's incremental build feature to keep track of the files which have changed. Uh, so we'd never need to actually edit this file. And the rest of the files here we can split into two categories. So we've got index.html, uh, which has front matter at the top, uh, which is this section here we'll go over in another tutorial. So files with front matter will be processed by Jekyll and then output to the underscore site directory. And then files without front matter, like uh, we've got a CSS file here, will just be copied straight across to the underscore site directory. Um, so this file here is an exact clone of my style sheet in my site. And that's the structure of a basic Jekyll website. This tutorial was brought to you by Cloud Cannon, the cloud content management system for Jekyll. For more free tutorials like this one, check out learn.cloudcannon.com.